Well, good morning and welcome. Okay. It is a pleasure to see you all here this morning. Um, as we prepare our hearts and minds for worship, I did kind of want to get you kind of back in the, the mood of Job as we complete uh, Job's um, kind of our, our fourth portion of that series. So as we prepare our hearts and minds, kind of let's get back into that, uh, that story of Job and let us begin our worship by hearing the call to worship from Psalm 34. Let us bless the Lord at all times. Let his praise be continually in our mouths. Let our souls make their boast in the Lord. O oh, magnify the Lord and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me and he delivered me from all my fears. This poor soul cried and was heard by the Lord. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are those who take refuge in him. Let us pray. O oh God, through whose blessed Son we have the hope as heirs of Christ, we may purify ourselves as he is pure, that when he comes again with power and great glory, we may be made like him in his eternal and glorious kingdom, where he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. As we continue our worship, let us stand in body or in spirit and join the singing number 117 in our blue hymnal, O God, our help in ages past. <laughs> chapter 42 verses 1 through 6 and 10 through 17 then job answered the lord i know that you can do all things and that no purpose of yours can be thwarted who is this that hides counsel with knowledge without knowledge therefore i have uttered what i did not understand things too wonderful for me which i did not know hear and i will speak i will question you and you declare to me I had heard of you by the hearing of the ear, but now my eye sees you. Therefore, I despise myself and repent in dust and ashes. And the Lord restored the fortunes of Job when he had prayed for his friends. And the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Then there came to him all his brothers and sisters and all who had known him before. 
and they ate bread with him in his house. They showed him sympathy and comforted him for all the evil that the Lord had brought upon him. And each of them gave him a piece of money and a gold ring. The Lord blessed the latter days of Job more than his beginning. And he had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, 1,000 yoke of oxen, and 1,000 donkeys. He also had seven sons and three daughters. He named the first Jemima, the second Keziah, and the third Karen Hapuk. And, all in the land, and in all the land there were no women so beautiful as Job's daughters. And their father gave them an inheritance along with their brothers. After this, Job lived 140 years and saw his children and his children's children four generations. And Job died old and full of days. As we come to this time of praise for the gifts that God has blessed us with, let us stand and join in praise of those gifts by singing the doxology. God, you indeed are our help, not simply in the ages before us, but our help and our sustaining and our support now. Lord, we come to you and we ask for, ask for your sustaining this day as we lift before you our joys, our concerns, as we share with you the blessings of our lives. Lord, we thank you that you have called us into our own ministry, that you have blessed us with so many gifts, and that we are able to bring those gifts before you this day. We ask that you use them, those that are given in the offering box, those that still reside in the hearts and the lives of those who are giving, and that you use them for your sake, and so that you may through us, help and support and sustain and uphold those who are in need. We praise you for the joys that are on our own hearts and minds, as well as the celebration that the Election Day mini sale seemed to have gone well, uh, despite uh, only having limited items, but also being able to reconnect with those who uh, we had not seen in a while. And we lift before you the concerns that are on their hearts and minds as well. In the lives of those who are connected to this church, but in a unique way. We lift before you Mr. Gray as he continues to heal and his journey after his heart attacks. We lift before you Terry with her own health issues, as well as the the burden of the challenge of Kevin and Kira's family and attempting to discern what would be the best for their child, as well as the situations where so many are still grieving in the midst of all of that. We lift before you Karen Light as she continues her healing journey with brain cancer. We lift before you Bruce as he awaits his surgery and as he prepares for that, let him have the, the patience and let him have the, the um, rest that is needed in order to prepare him for that time. We lift before you Hazel as she has um, dealt with the challenge of having her mobility being slowed due to her stretched muscle, but is now working to recover from that uh, loss of time as she regains strength in her hip and in her leg. We lift before you the Getz family cat as they struggle with the 
diagnosis and the decisions and all the things that they have yet to know the answers to. And we lift them all before you as they make a challenging decision with their fur family. We lift before you those who are on our prayer list as well as those unspoken needs on our own hearts and minds this day. And we do this in the name of the one who does comfort and uphold and strengthen us, as well as the one who reveals to us his presence, the one who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As we turn to our second hymn, um, it appears that I have gone deep into the archives of songs that have not been sung in a while as I searched out uh, an appropriate uh, song for us this morning. So we are going to uh, hear God Leads Us Along once through um, completely before we sing it, found on 473 in your red hymnal, and you may remain seated. <laughs>
to the conclusion of Job, and the temptation would be to, to jump on this ending and say, wonderful, everything worked out for the better. It all sorted itself out in the end. And not only did Job go away with, you know, what he had, but he ended up with even more than what he had had. And the temptation is to say, oh, after all of that trouble, there's always going to be something amazing that comes out of it. The temptation is to say that. But I want to make sure we don't go there too soon. It's good to go there. It's good to recognize blessings and, and bounty and all that God gives. But it's also important to recognize that sometimes life doesn't go there that fast. The first portion of Job, of, or this passage of Job, Job responds to God's statements to him, statements that we had explored in the last section of Job, where he asks Job, who is this that hides counsel without knowledge? Who speaks without understanding? Listen, I will speak, I will question you, and you can answer me, since of course Job had spent the entire time asking God and expecting him to declare. And Job realizes that he is indeed in a relationship with the one who is capable of anything. And he says, and having had you respond, now I'm, I despise myself. Basically, I'm angry at myself for even spending that time questioning you, uh, arguing with you, debating with you. I'm, I'm, I despise myself for even bothering. And sometimes that's kind of how we feel as humans. After we spend time in a, in a situation of questioning, we spend time uh, then say, oh, I shouldn't have questioned God, and then that, was, that wasn't worth it, and, and now I'm mad at myself because I questioned God. But you see here, and even if you continue to read those, those verses that we skipped over, God doesn't say either one or the other. He doesn't say, oh, no, you totally shouldn't have done that. You're absolutely right. But he also doesn't say, you know, no, 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 you weren't wrong. God just kind of lets him have his emotion, his understanding. And we're left with a very human understanding of how we sometimes respond after we have spent a time of challenge. And I think a part of this scripture here, a part of the important lesson from it is that we as humans are probably going to come out of a situation where we have challenged God, questioned God, and then we're going to feel guilty for doing so. We're going to feel bad about ourselves for doing so. But I would say that as much as Job is an object lesson, a, a fairy tale, a, a, a something designed to get to this moral, as much as Job is a narrative that's sole purpose, regardless of historical accuracy, whether it exists, where it doesn't exist, it's sole purpose in its telling is to relate Job to us, is to put ourselves in Job's position, is to make us understand where Job is coming from, is to, in this passage, to help us understand that sometimes this is how we feel after we have been in a situation like Job. Sometimes we come out the other side and we're like, well, that was dumb of me. But I think this passage reassures us, this whole book reassures us in its nature that we are a people who in some ways are delightfully predictable and God doesn't, God doesn't hate us for that. God doesn't look at us and go, yeah, you absolutely should not have questioned me. No, he lets Job have his emotion and Job's going to think what Job's going to think and God's not going to get down in the nitpicky of, you know, parsing out Job's emotions. He isn't going to, you know, argue with Job over what Job feels about this situation. And instead, God just goes on and restores Job. But the verses that we don't hear, because they're not in the text at all, are what Job and the rest of his life were like from the not positive side. Because you think, oh, he's got all these blessings. He's got more of things than he could ever own than he'd ever owned before. He's got more kids than he ever had before. His daughters are gorgeous. 
As a matter of fact, it's very common to name boys' names in the Bible, but here we just skip over the names of Job's son. We don't even bother to mention Job's sons, and we mention his daughters. He considers his daughters even so much of a blessing that he gives them an inheritance that's equal to their sons. That's pretty, pretty different for that time. And that's because he considers them just as much a blessing as his sons. He'd been rewarded with so much, but what are the memories of the family that's gone? Do you think Job just forgot all of that because he got blessed so much by the Lord? Did he look in the proverbial mirror, whatever pastor or mirror in those days, and see the scars from his illness, see the scars from where he scraped himself in order to find relief? Were there days when he experienced the sorrow of what had been? We don't hear this side of the story because they focus on the the good ending and because Job is a metaphor for our spiritual journey in so much as it is for our physical journey of course this celebration exists this acquiring of all of these amazing things this restoration of our lives exists just for some of us it may not be here on earth and of course that's what this text is focusing on the eternal rewards of walking with God and staying in a relationship with God regardless of what happens, regardless of the questions, regardless of the challenges, staying in that kind of relationship that builds faith, that builds strength, that builds love even in the midst of challenges, even in the midst of questioning God. This, this passage here, this is, is the culmination of our lives and that also includes our lives in eternity which is why sometimes it's important not to jump straight to that celebration because for some of us that restoration may not happen until the coming of the kingdom in its entirety so it's a blessing to know there is good coming but also an understanding that knowing if it doesn't happen in this lifetime, the story of Job gives us this sense that, and this understanding that it's more important whether you continue your relationship with God. Even after restoration, I'm sure there were challenges. I'm sure there was sadness. I'm sure there was a sense of grief of what had been. Unlike the way this passage seems to close out the text and to kind of blow us all away with its celebration, and blow us all away with its restoration, there is some human aspects that we need to take a time to recognize may not have been written in this text. much kind of like a fairy tale ending or the ending of a parable or the ending of a story everything has this kind of ultimate moral and this ultimate goal and in this case the ultimate goal was to show restoration even after challenges even after spending time in questions and in deep despair that's the purpose of this but just like any story any parable there's always information that's left out and I want us to be sure not to jump so quick to this quote unquote fairy tale ending and recognize the challenges, the loss, the grief, the, the difficulty that's still going to exist even if it, we experience restoration from God as Job did here on earth. So yes, there is promise. After all of this, even after Job spent time questioning God, even after Job heard God's voice and, and got, you know, ex got the talking to from God, even after all of that occurred, there is indeed still joy, still restoration, still celebration coming. 
We don't want to discount that in its entirety. It is indeed coming. But we as humans also have a tendency to jump to those happy endings a bit too quickly for our own lives to have adjusted to the fact, I guess is a good way of saying it, for our own lives to have adjusted to the fact that sometimes life doesn't happen that way. The more important message from Job is not the restoration here on earth, but the restoration in God's eternal kingdom. And to recognize that sometimes after challenges, things don't just pop right back. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. But even if they do, there are human challenges still in the midst of all of that. So I definitely don't want to turn this into a downer of a sermon. Oh man, there's more challenges after the challenges but rather reassure you that there is indeed a promised restoration. But also give time for you to sit with the understanding that even if restoration occurs here on earth, there will still be empty spaces, there will still be challenges, there will still be grief, there will still be loss, even if we receive 200-fold what we had had before the challenges occurred. Job says, now my eye sees. What Job is saying is that he had heard before. In other words, he had understood part and part before. What Job is alluding to is this concept that now he has full understanding. Job had seen the world in part and part, Job, as, as we humans do. Job had seen the world in, in fractures and, and portions of what God was operating with, but Job and now, Job's analysis of the situation comes to this understanding that he now has seen all of God's world, all of God's plan. Even if briefly, he now has much fuller understanding. May that be the message that your heart takes from this passage, this message of comprehension of the greater story, the greater picture, the greater image, the greater life that God has for us and how a more complete picture of that has a tendency to broaden our minds but also challenge our minds as well. We have a tendency as humans to be limited in thought. This is, this is who we are. We can't see with God's brain. We can't see with that completeness, that totality, and so we have a limited perspective on the world. But what Job is expressing is that he now fully understands that relationship and that life with God. The more important message out of this is not whether or whether or not you get redemption here on earth. As important as the message of redemption in eternity is, the more important message is more of an, a greater understanding of what God is doing in our lives, of what God is capable of, of the way that God moves, of the way that he responds, of the way that he seeks to have a deeper relationship with us, a relationship that's based on greater understanding. And so as we seek to learn from Job, as we seek to understand this, this parable, this mystery, this story that has been presented to us, this example of Christian relationship with God, as we seek to better see that and understand that story, may we also find a deeper and greater understanding of God's relationship with us and our relationship with him. We can rest on the promise that a restoration is indeed coming, but most importantly recognize how it is that we interact with God, whether we see that restoration now or in the future. How is it that we see God's relationship with our lives unfold? How is it that we conduct ourselves as we understand more of God's plan? How is it that we react when we understand more of what that spirit of God is guiding us into, into and out of?
and back into and round about and wherever that journey takes us may indeed our eyes not our physical eyes the eyes of our heart the eyes of our soul the eyes of our spirit that spirit that resonates with god that spirit that gives us life and breath may those eyes the spiritual eyes see more may we comprehend more of what god has for us as we continue in a journey and a relationship with him and we await the restoration that is promised to us as we conclude our time together the song that we will conclude with is an affirmation of those wonderful words that God has given us the the text of the Bible but also the words in our spirit the messages that he has given to us through so many different ways that are life-giving regardless of challenge regardless of circumstance regardless of how we react that God indeed has a message of restoration for the journey of our lives let us stand in body or in spirit and sing 600 in our blue hymnal <laughs> in his scripture and in our spirit these words of life and restoration may this they support us as we seek to continue our relationship with God and to see ever more of his life and love for us amen and amen